involved. It's a, it's a big fight, but I mean, International Fight Week, ranked opponent, top 10. I mean, does this feel like a special moment in your career, or is this just, just another fight for you? It definitely feels like, uh, well, I feel calm. I always feel pretty calm going into my fights. I never really get like nervous, or I'm not up at night thinking about bad shit like most people. I feel more calm going into this fight than I ever have. Um, you know, I fought on the Connor, a couple Connor cards or one or whatever. Those ones felt, you know, this feels like a big fight, but uh, every time I fight, I feel like I'm the main event, so they, they all feel pretty similar. I know eventually you will be the main event of a pay-per-view, but for now, this kind of slide of, you know, kicking it off, getting things, setting the tone, is that like the perfect spot for you? Yeah, that's where I prefer to be, you know, 7 p.m. I know what time I'm fighting. I get about an hour of media after, so I get to go watch the, you know, the last couple fights, so it's, a, it's actually really nice. I like it. I'd rather either be you know, opening up the main card or the main event, so I don't see any other position to be in. That calmness that you feel ahead of this one, do you know what to attribute that to? Just, I'm confident, I'm prepared, I had a great camp. Um, that last camp I went into that fight with like hurt ribs and I was like, well, hopefully he doesn't grab me. That's literally like last three weeks I wasn't letting anybody grab me, anyone, you know. So going into this fight I feel very healthy and uh, I think that's probably Plays a, plays a little bit in that, into that. A lot of people are looking at this as kind of a milestone, this test, right? The first top 10 opponent for you. Are you looking at this as a, a milestone in your career or a chance to you know, prove anything? Yeah, p p beating Pedro will be a big deal. Um, I think he's only lost to former world champions. But uh, not just beating Pedro, but finishing Pedro would be a massive deal. Um, you know, he's, like I said, he's fought and lost to only former world champions. With that being said, I do believe I will be his toughest fight. Um, and and I, I think he's my toughest fight as well. Last thing for me, I mean, a big win here. You know, you've been patient up to this point, like not rushing things, right? But as you said, big deal over a top guy. Do you start to accelerate the run and, and look to the top of the division, or do you still kind of take the, the patient approach to moving up? Yeah, um, we'll have to see how this fight goes, and, you know, maybe I'll spit out a name after, you know, Joe Rogan standing next to me, call someone out. Um, I'm a couple fights away from a title fight, especially if I can get the finishes that I've been doing. You know, that people want to see that. People want to see me be champion. So I just got to go out there and, you know, perform, do what I know I'm capable of doing. That's putting Pedro's lights out. Sean, over here to your right. You keep saying how important it would be to finish this fight. Do you actually see a route and how you're going to do that? Or is it just, I think my ability is so good that I'll end up finishing him however I want? Yeah, I mean, any, anybody my weight, my weight class, I could see me standing across from them and knocking them out. I've done it over and over and over again. It's hard not to envision that. You know, everyone I fight, I knock out. So it's kind of, you know, it's just, that's just how I see this fight going. It's how I see any fight I'm ever going to be in going. It's just me putting my hands on their chin enough times and they'll fall. I feel like you're one of the guys, the latest guys in this phenomenon where you overcome an obstacle fans are putting in front of you and then they take the obstacle away. They say, well, actually, oh, he was old on the decline. Are you expecting that after you win this one? I could submit Habib and people would be like, yeah, but something. They'd say something. So I have paid no attention to what the negative fans say. It doesn't matter to me. Yes, I'll go out there and finish Pedro. And yes, it'll be like, yeah, but so it doesn't matter. Are you wearing two watches? Yes. What time is it? Neither of them are right. <laughs> hey, Sean, over here, uh, right in the middle. Um, Munoz has never been knocked out. Would that add a bit more, just going out there and being the first guy to do that uh, in the UFC? Yeah, it would be huge. I mean, I think it would, you know, I think a win over him will be huge, but a finish over Pedro would be massive. And that's, I'm all about the massive. I'm trying to, you know, go above and beyond and perform for the people, and people want to see people's lights get put out. Winning a decision, I would not be upset against Pedro because it's very, very tough. Um, but I definitely want to put his lights out. And if you do end up knocking him out or finishing him, uh, where does a win put you in the, in the division? Because, again, Pedro's never been knocked out. That's got to count for something. There's a little Russian dude running around saying no one wants to fight him. You know, that, that's an option. Fab Rant might be an option. He got beat up a couple times, so it might not be. Um, the division's crazy right now. A lot of guys are already booked, so we'll just have to see how the, how the fights play out here in the next couple months. Chito Vera, your former opponent's fighting um, Dominic Cruz coming up here. Who do you favor in that fight, uh, just as someone who's fought Chito? It's hard to count Chito out. Um, I, 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 I thought, uh, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm excited for that fight. I'm excited to see how that plays out. 
I think Dominic's going to – I said I, I predicted Dominic would win, and people think it's biased, but I also thought Cheeto was going to beat Rob. I thought Cheeto was going to beat Frankie, um, and he kind of did. So we'll see. And just last one for me, what's it been like as a fighter in your career, you know, sort of transcending into the mainstream? I saw you on No Jumper a few months ago. Not every fighter is going to get an opportunity like that. How has that been for you just being such a strong brand in the UFC and just promoting yourself in, in the proper way? Yeah, I mean, being a part of the UFC whose m platform is massive, and so I just go out there and put on performances, and they give me this platform to be able to expand my audience is, is, is huge, um, you know, so... Just super grateful to be able to work with the UFC and they give me the platform to be able to go out there and put on these amazing performances. And um, being known for, being famous for fighting, not just fighting, but knocking people out is there's nothing cooler. It's not, you, being a rapper is cool, but being able to knock people out and being known for that, that's the most, that's, that's it. That's the number one thing everyone wants to be known for. Sean, back here to your left. I know the resume uh, Pedro Munoz is one of the things that stands out here because of the guys that he has beat and the guys he hasn't. But from a stylistic perspective, what stands out about this matchup? What, what's, what's the most challenging thing about Pedro's game that gets you excited? His durability is, is you know, I, I fought guys like Chris who who's, was durable. We saw how durable he was. I just lit him up for 14 and a half minutes. So I've proved that I'm capable of doing that. Um, his durability is going to be... You know, that's that's what I think is toughest for him. Um, but, you know, obviously he's going to come out there try to kick my legs. That's everyone's game plan. Um, so I feel like every time I fight, it's like, okay, kick his legs, put him up against the fence, try to take him down. That's everyone's game plan. That's, you know, that's the way to beat me. So that's what I'm assuming he's going to come out with. You mentioned uh, a few different names of where you could go with the victory on Saturday. One name that keeps coming up a lot that you didn't say was Adrian Yanez, who had a, a great performance against Tony Kelly on that Austin card. He continues to call your name. Is that something that you think could happen sooner rather than later? Or is that something because I feel like fans are excited. We could, we could build this thing up for a while until you guys actually get in there. So how, how do you view your paths at this point? Yeah, that was a super impressive performance. Um, super slick boxer, very well-rounded. Um, I was actually calling him out before I got this fight book, trying to fight him. And there was, I mean, you guys, you can go back and look on Twitter. He didn't really seem like he was too into that fight. So, you know, he got some confidence now. He beat someone. Um, yeah, that's definitely a fight that's going to, he needs, obviously, we're, we're both growing. He needs to win a couple more fights. I'm going to win a couple more fights. And if we're in the, you know, on the champ, I, even before that, yeah, I could, I could see that fight happening. Uh, I think he needs a couple more performances, and, and he'll be up in there, yeah, up in the talks with who's next. Last thing, you are excited to fight in this spot because you could do your media and then you can go back and watch the two title fights at the end of the night. So how do you break those two down? Who, who do you think comes out of those two fights? I don't know. I, I honestly, it's like, don't, I don't really think about any other fights on the card. I'm excited. You know, I think Max and Alexander are both, you know, top 45ers to ever do it you know it's gonna we've watched them fight already twice excited for that I don't know how it's gonna play out my guess is as good as yours Izzy versus Jared Jared's a teammate of mine Izzy's one of my favorite fighters I'm gonna just sit back and enjoy and watch how that fight plays out um you know really good card I'm excited to watch Sean just a few here um you've been very mindful <clears throat> excuse me you've been very mindful in your ascent up the UFC about matchmaking, dollars, position on cards. In a, in a sport where we see so many young guys say, I'm gonna fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. Where did you sort of get this mindfulness from for managing your career? I've always kind of looked at it as a, I didn't just get in to the UFC as a fighter. It was like a businessman slash fighter. I, I felt like getting into the UFC was like, okay, I wanna make as much money as possible. It's not, I'm not gonna take a fight on two weeks notice and then my stock goes down because I you know, lost three fights in a row. So it's been, I've thought about it for, for a while. I definitely feel like uh, since day one, since I've, I've always kind of wanted my career to play out a certain way and here we are. As we talk about moving up the division and you say, you know, a couple fights away from a title, are we now seeing, are you now happy with how much you're making and are you ready for the title fight or is there still kind of another round of negotiations that has to happen? Yeah, once I, I mean, I, I think, you know, renegotiated talk with UFC, I feel like we're good, we're partners, you know. I, the more money I can make them, the more money they're 
willing to pay me. So I want to go out there and put on beautiful performances and, and earn my paycheck. I don't want to just tell them, hey, we, you know, you owe me this much. So I'm going to go out there and continue to earn my paychecks. Right now I'm happy with what I'm getting paid. Um, I think I knock the next guy out, and then before the title fight, yeah, I would like to sit back down and say, hey, is this fair? Do you guys agree that this is a fair amount to pay me for this title fight? You know, they have they have statistics. They have analytics. They know I'm bringing in eyeballs. So I think at the end of the day, they're fair. You know, if you're not going to bring in eyeballs, they're not going to pay you. And last thing, I know sort of managing family time and training camp was really important for you. How are we going to celebrate with the family post-fight? Elena will be sleeping probably at that time. Um, Danny's grand, uh, mom's going to be watching her at the hotel. So I'll probably sneak up, give her a couple kisses, tell her daddy did it, and then go get buzzed up with the boys, drink some happy dads, and hang out. All right, thank you. Sean, just over here at the back. Um, Aljamain Sterling uh, and TJ Dillashaw is being targeted for UFC 279. What are your thoughts on that matchup, and how do you see that going down? I recently rewatched Corey versus TJ, um, and TJ impressed me a lot. You know, coming back from his layoff from cheating, and uh, Aljo really impressed me against his rematch against Peter. It's a good fight. I'm excited. You can't count Aljo out. I think. TJ might have an advantage for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, but I'm, I'm excited for that fight. I definitely would like to watch that front row and, and, see, and see what they're all about. But those dudes are, you know, the top, top dogs. So it's going to be a good fight. Hi, Sean. Uh, over here, same place. Um, what do you think about uh, sharing the same card as Sean Strickland, your old friend? <laughs> I don't know. Me and Sean, I haven't had any run-ins with him. I think if I do, you know, I don't think there's anything there. I think he just doesn't like some of my tattoos, which, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he, I've not, I haven't had any run-ins with him. Seems a little crazy sometimes, but I think we all do. I probably seem a little crazy sometimes, too. Sean, over here. Is, other side. Is there a reason why you're wearing two incorrect watches? No, there's not a reason. Couldn't tell you. Are Got those, two wrists. Are, are those glasses? Are those glasses real? Yes, of course. Come on. Any more questions? Yeah, just wondering here for <coughs> Sean. Um, you obviously intend to be the champion and fighting for the belt. What do you think would be the biggest fight for you in terms of who would be holding the title when you potentially get there? Like numbers-wise? Yeah. Pay-per-view? Yeah. Um, honestly, no. Nobody in the bantamweight division really. Aljo don't sell shit, to be honest. Um, Cody has lost like 14 fights in a row. He would be probably a big one four years ago. Um, Dominic Cruz is like kind of probably sells a little bit. Jose Aldo would probably be bigger, maybe not in the United States, but um, I don't know. Maybe TJ. TJ. TJ could probably sell pretty well. Um, I think the Mia versus Cheeto rematch would be big just because of the drama that's been behind that. Um, real, I think me versus anybody can be a big fight, but who's that, who's that other guy on the other side that's going to help really, really do like a million? I don't think there's really anybody in the division right now. Do you think Henry Cejudo fix, fits it all in this mix? Um, is he coming back? We don't know. It seems like he wants to. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.